Now this part of the question then, we've got to find the equation of the tangent to this curve at the point P. Remember the point P had coordinates 2, 7 as we showed in the first part of the question. So just to get a little bit of background to this, see what's going on, I would suggest drawing a, a quick sketch. So let's just say we've got our axes x and y. Now we've got a positive cubic curve and we should know that they basically look something like this. I'll do it again, something like that. It's going to cross the y-axis at 9. When x is 0, y would be 9. So we could mark that point there as 9. We're told that x has to be greater than 0. So if I take a typical positive cubic graph, something like this, and just draw part of it in, most probably at a guess it's going to come down something like this and go up like that. All right? So we've got the graph looking like this kind of thing. Now it doesn't really matter if you can't sketch the graph. This is only done just to give you an idea of what's happening. So we've got to find the equation of the tangent at the point P, 2, 7. So let's imagine that 2, 7 is just say a point here. All right? That's the point P at 2, 7. As I say, I can't be too sure of this, but if that were the case, then we're looking at a tangent to the curve and that tangent would look something like that. Okay, so there's our tangent. Now, tangents being straight lines, their equation will be of the form y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1. Well, that's the form I'm going to use rather than y equals mx plus c. Why? Because x1, y1, we already have. x1 will be 2 y1 would be 7. Now, m is the gradient of the tangent. We don't know that yet, so what we need to do is to get the gradient at the point where x equals 2 on this curve. And so that requires differentiation. So the first thing we need to do is to find dy by dx, differentiate y with respect to x. So in the usual way, Differentiating the first term, we would get 3x squared. For the next term, minus 4x. For the minus x, we would have minus 1. And for the constant 9, that just goes to 0. So this gives us the gradient at any point on the curve. So what we need is the gradient at the point when x is 2, at the point p. So just put down here that when x equals 2, we would have that dy by dx equals 3 times 2 squared minus 4 times 2 minus 1. And if you work that out, what you're going to get is 3. So the gradient for the tangent then is 3. So we've got everything we need now to get the equation of the tangent. So we can say that therefore the equation of the tangent, okay, let's say at P is, all right, don't mind equals there, you'll be wrong, okay. Equation of tangent at P is, give a subtitle so the reader can follow what you're doing hopefully, and what we've got is, therefore, we have y minus y1, y1 is 7, equals m, the gradient of the tangent, which is 3, multiplied by x minus x1. x1 is going to be the coordinate, the x-coordinate p, which is going to be 2. Now, we need to get this in the form y equals mx plus c, because that's what was requested in the question. So what I'm going to do is expand the bracket here and we get 3x minus 6. And then if I add 7 to both sides, what we end up with is that y equals 3x plus 1. So that's in the form y equals mx plus c. And we can run a check on the graph. Does it look sensible? Well, we've got a positive gradient for the tangent. And it's not drawn to scale, but at least it crosses the y-axis 
above zero. This point, remember, would be the one on the end. So we've got a graph then that looks reasonably sensible. Okay, well, I hope you've been able to follow that part of the question then. And that brings us now to the end of it.